Everyone's always looking at Ampharos and thinking, this thing sucks. Stat-wise, it's really only got that 115 special attack to talk about, but sometimes that can be enough. To fix the slow speed issue, Ampharos can run agility, effectively doubling its speed to pretty crazy levels, and then it's time to start beaming. Meteor Beam is a 120 power special rock move that boosts special attack on turn 1, and then hits on turn 2. We use the Power Herb item to pull this off in one turn instead, and now we're fast, kinda naturally bulky, and hitting hard. Stab Thunderbolts come in clutch after the boost, and I like to run Terra Fairy Blast to catch people off guard. Ampharos is always kinda just... there, and so I had to make him a beast. Alright, look, for years, Ampharos has been ridiculed and bullied by the competitive community for potentially never beating the mid-allegations, but today, that is gonna... I'm gonna try to make a change. I just like the dude Ampharos, and so today we're gonna show him some love. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Gliscor, as I, in fact, have a coffee table, ready to have some stuff set on me, and I kind of have a great matchup here. Obviously, Gliscor, absolutely allergic to ice. I imagine they could either protect turn one, set up some stealth rock of their own, as they imagine I probably go for the stealth rock, and that's exactly what I'm going to do, as much as that Gale is kind of taunting me to click. I'm just going to go for that stealth rock, as they actually make the risky play and go for the spikes. So this is going to tell me a little bit about the Gliscor they're working with, gonna be more kind of hazard oriented rather than potentially not being like a swords dance set so that feels pretty good and they're just gonna get that toxic orb to activate because Gliscor is toxic like that so at this point there's no reason for me not to click the mountain gale I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me I'm defensive as hell and mountain gales they hurt a lot so I just decided to click the gale they're gonna actually end up switching out into the king gambit so the Gliscor came in got his toxic set up a little bit of pointy spikes and then bailed so the King Gambit comes in, does take the Mountain Gale nicely, and the problem with this matchup is that my Avalog cannot touch the Steel types unless I'm like a body press set, which I am not. So, I decide I'm just going to go right into the Obama Snow. Now, this team is working with a little bit of Snow Synergy. It obviously boosts the defense on both the uh, Glaceon along with the Avalog, and honestly, Obama Snow, the little frosted mini wheat boy, is pretty damn good in itself. So, I bring this thing in, does make it Snow immediately as they just go right for that kowtow cleave and uh as i'm looking at this i figure i'm probably faster unless for whatever reason this thing's running speed so i'm just gonna go for the aurora veil and that's actually gonna give me a nice spot to potentially even live a super effective hit just because now i have that 50 percent boost in defense from the snow along with that aurora veil and i do actually live that iron head and i'm telling you the the frosted mini wheat comes out here and just lives stuff that you would not expect horrible defensive typing but now I actually even have the upper hand with a nice little earth power. I just decide to power the earth right into him, get some nice chip on the thing, doesn't quite finish it off. And I just kind of figured that Obama Snow was a bit wasted at that point. I got up my hail, set up my Aurora Veil, and I'm like, all right, that's fine. I got that thing down to the point where either of my sweepers should have an easy enough time. And as I'm looking at the matchup, honestly, Ampharos is looking kind of nice, which may be the first time anybody has said that, but... I figure it's time to bring this bad boy out, and while I don't get the benefit from the snow, I do still have that Aurora Veil up for a few turns, which is kind of necessary in getting old skinny Pikachu here to do some stuff. So, I obviously am working with the agility here. I go for that just on the off chance that they might want a Sucker Punch here, uh, but it's more than likely they are going to switch, which they do go right into the Gliscor. So, this is kind of a fine matchup for me. Obviously, this thing comes in expecting something like a Thunderbolt. But I instead just shake back and forth real fast, and I'll tell you what, now we are absolutely zooming. So, Gliscor at full health is a little bit of a problem. I know that this thing can take any attack from me. So for that reason, I'm actually going to bust out the Terra, kind of just expecting the Earthquake to come through. Behind that Aurora Veil, I should be able to live at least one. And after that agility, we are looking real fast on the Amphi here. So, I put the heart on my head, we're going full Fairy Terra on his ass. And at this point, I know that I'm going to be faster, which allows me to now just go ahead and beam some meteors right at it. Now, of course, that is a two-turn attack, but that's why we are working with the herb that allows us to get it off immediately. And it's also going to be a nice little uh, little special attack boost paired with a neutral hit here. So I'm thinking I'm going to get some great damage. And it actually just straight up knocks out the dude with a crit. So Ampharos is actually the goat, because now that means I don't have to take any earthquake chip, even though it wouldn't have been a whole lot. Uh, but that makes our job a bunch easier with the Ampharos. So... 
they're actually going to go ahead and bring in the thickest flower, the, the Serena, who is obviously resistant to my stab here. So I just kind of have to go for the Terror Blast. At least going to get the neutral hit on the Fairy type Terror Blast. Shouldn't be enough to kill this thing at plus one special attack, but it does do a nice little chunk for a two hit KO. And they're actually going to take this opportunity to go for the Rapid Spin. So I imagine the Rapid Spin play was not only to get rid of the Stealth Rock, but also it kind of burns the last turn of the Aurora Veil. And now they're thinking, all right, the Crazy Legs over here is going to be at least faster than a freaking Ampharos at plus one. But joke is on them, Ampharos with plus two after an agility is faster than a max speed uh, Serena after just one speed boost. So now I can just Terror Blast her ass back to the Shadow Realm and Ampharos is going on an absolute tear over here. It, with plus one special attack, it goes a long way and honestly a lot of the time Fairy Terror works really well because I do see that uh, Dragapult in the back, which is kind of one of the biggest issues. So now they decide to go into the Alolan Ninetales and this thing is not that concerning. I know that I can take special attacks all damn day long and uh, two Thunderbolts should be just enough to take care of it. It almost just cleanly takes out the guy and then allows it to just go for that Aurora Veil. They're playing for the long game here because they imagine, you know, Moonblast isn't going to be able to do enough. A Blizzard, I know I can live. And the Aurora Veil just gives the few guys in the back a chance. So I know I'm again still faster. I'm considering whether or not I want another Meteor Beam, but I just opt for the Thunderbolt just to give myself as much health as possible. Takes care of the Ninetales. And now they're down to just a couple mons left. And uh, as Ampharos is just sitting here waiting for a damn victim, like a, like an absolute monster over here, they decide to go into Dragapult. And the thing about Dragapult being a fairy type here is that they're probably looking at their matchup thinking, hmm, I actually cannot really even touch this thing because I, obviously it cannot go for Dragon, it can't really go for Ghost that well. And they just decide to bail and just save the lives of their innocent little fellas back there, spared from a harsh harsh death that Ampharos was dishing out. So that is kind of hilarious. It's going to be the end of game one, which is going to bring us into game two. Ampharos absolutely popped off. Got a little bit cut short because you know, people would just be saving themselves time out here because, I, I, listen, I understand. Ampharos is the scariest mod in existence. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Hey, I feel like now would be a good time to ask. If you're enjoying the video, you should probably hit that like button. YouTube enjoys it when you click the button. I don't I don't know. Just just click it. Anyway, my opponent is going to lead off with another Alolan Ninetales, which is kind of welcome to see, especially when I'm working with a snow team myself. As Avalug now, with a 50% defense boost, this thing, if you're trying to hit it with the physical attack, you're going to have a bad time. Of course, the Ninetales is not, but they're just going to go for that Aurora Veil anyway. And that allows me to set up my little little coffee table minions. This Stealth Rock is going to stay up for a while. So, as I'm looking at this, obviously I'm not super concerned. Again, this is a sturdy set with the Custat Berry. If they want to knock me down to a uh, sturdy range, I can then just Custat Berry. And I would love some chip on the on the Ninetales. I know that this thing is going to be able to take uh, some decent amount of attacks, especially with that Aurora Veil up. So, as they actually decide to go for the Nasty Plot, I'm just going to throw some rocks at him. I'm just out here. This is what Avalug does. He just kind of throws little baby rock boys around and of course every time I'm using a multi-hit move without the loaded dice I swear to god it's always two hits it's like <laughs> it's ridiculous so they're gonna end up going for the draining kiss which is annoying because now my rock blast was worthless but not only that I missed the rock blast and I'm not even in custat berry range so I've been absolutely hoed by this nine tails once again and I decided to switch this thing out now, any Alola Ninetales with Nasty Plot set up are pretty scary. At least, luckily though, I do have a Galarian Slowking on the squad that is working with pretty much max specially defensive, so I know that I can take attacks. I can threaten this thing out, you know, with the prospect of like a Sludge Bomb. And as I get a nice little smooch to the forehead, it doesn't even hurt that bad. So Brainwash is like, this is fine. So, I decide to just go for the Thunder Wave here, try to block a little bit of momentum, I imagine. Potentially they switch. But the Ninetales turns out to not be scared. They're just going to Nasty Plot right in my face. And I just throw a little bit of a, a wave of thunder at him, which is going to now allow them to be not only slower, but also have that chance for the para. And this thing's going to be a whole lot less scary, you know, being slow. So yeah, at this point, I still know that I can take attacks. A Blizzard is still going to hurt, but they actually go for a third Nasty Plot. But he is working up to plus six. And this thing is actually quite a damn threat right now, especially behind that Aurora Veil because another Sludge Bomb doesn't actually kill here, but I'm just gonna continue to go for it. They do get the full para, which is what we are hoping to see, and I'm just gonna continue to bomb out here. And uh, it does put it in range for where one more can kill, and again, I'm max specially defensive, so I don't care how much special attack you got, it's not that big of a deal. 
they actually end up switching out here, which is a bold move. Going to see how it plays out for them because they got to plus six and then just dip the hell out. So I imagine they probably just want to conserve that thing, you know, to maybe be able to bring back up some snow later. But then as I'm looking at it, I'm like, doesn't that thing just die to Stealth Rock? That would be kind of ideal. So they decide to switch into the Mammoth Swine. Uh, likely just a good switch just because now, obviously, I cannot touch that thing. I'm threatened by an Earthquake, and I'm like, well, if anything wants to deal with it, I'm just going to go into Avalug. Basically, as a bit of a death fodder in this situation, as uh, without any hail up or anything, I do just die to an earthquake. And it's not that bad, because while I do lose Avalug, that thing wasn't going to be outspeeding or getting custap range, unless there was Stealth Rock set up. So, I at least get the momentum on my side here, deciding what I want to bring in. I decide to go into the Obama Snow, uh, just because this thing is, it has a good matchup here, especially with that defense boost from the Snow. And I can potentially set up Aurora Veils, I can threaten this thing with the Giga Drain. And in general, we have a pretty good time against old face paint over there. So, they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra, which is kind of scary, because Mammoth Swine is a bit of a damn monster, and it turns out they're going to go with the Terra Steel. So that's going to allow this thing to take uh, Giga Drains all damn day long, and he looks like a freaking menace over there with the axe on his head. So, they do actually also have the Steel Stab, which is going to now be super effective. It's stabbed, but Mini Wheat is not going down like that, I'm telling you. This thing, with that defense boost, it truly just it just lives stuff. Unless you're a flamethrower, in which case, get the hell out of here. But, I go for that Aurora Veil with my 9 HP hanging on by a damn thread out here. And that is pretty solid. Because, you know, while I'm not light clay, it's still going to stick around for a few turns and allow me to take stuff that uh, it might allow me to set up. So, I now know that this thing is just going to outspeed me. It's not really worth saving the Obama Snow in my eyes. They still have their nine tails, the snow probably isn't going to come up unless they remove the hazards, but I just figured, you know what, I'm just going to let this thing go down here as they finish me with one more iron head. So, now the world is my oyster. I can switch into whatever I like, and Glaceon is looking enticing in the snow, but I can't really touch the steel, uh, now steel mammoth swine, so I decide to instead go into the Chandelure, who uh, is going to be Choice Scarf. I know that I can outspeed this thing, and it just kind of comes down to what are they going to switch into on a flamethrower. So, I decided I'm actually just going to click the Shadow Ball. I don't go for the Flamethrower here because obviously I'm Choice Scarf, and if they switch into something like the Skeledurge, potentially Dragonite, then I'm in a bit of a pickle there. So I go for the Shadow Ball because it does take out the Mammoth Swine regardless, and now it makes things a little bit interesting on what they want to bring in on the Chandelier, especially because now the Aurora Veil is on my side. We're out here feeling like a bulky Chandelier that's not just going to shatter into pieces. At least hopefully. So they're going to go into the Ninetales, who does in fact just die from the Stealth Rock. So that is fine by me, as Shandy is just out here sitting waiting for a damn opponent. So they're going to go into the Skeledurge here, and it is not going to be working with the Heavy Duty Boots. We do get that good chip from the Stealth Rock, which feels like this is going to be very close range for a Shadow Ball to knock it out. I have no reason really to switch here, so I'm just going to continue tossing around Shadow Balls. And that does in fact just take care of the Skeledurge. And we got the Chandelier going on a little bit of a tear here. They probably expected uh, for that thing to be able to live. They did not have a defensive Terra, and uh, that was a, it was a bold move. So, Dragonite is one of the fellas that can, in fact, take a Shadow Ball. It does no longer have that multi-scale ability because of the Stealth Rock, however. And I'm like, you know what? This thing might be in range for a Shadow Ball to kill if I can just go for this Terra Ghost, just to get that little bit of extra damage. And it might be looking like Chandelier is out here just making moves. So, I go full Ghost on him. I put on my little hat. And we're looking extra Ghost Leash. Fresh out of Luigi's Mansion out here. And I, again, just continue to spam Shadow Ball. Sometimes you just gotta mash A. And Pokemon becomes a little mash A simulator. So, I go for that. It does, in fact, just barely hang on. It lives it just barely, which now allows it to go for a Tailwind. Which is like, hmm... That is going to make them definitely faster than a Scarf Chandelier, depending on kind of the speed this thing's working with. And uh, Tailwind Dragonite, a bit spooky. My Aurora Veil also does wear off. However, I'm staying in here. There's really not much reason for me to switch, as they just go for an Outrage, and that does knock me out. So, I'm going for the Terra Ghost there. It was worth it for the payoff if I grabbed the kill. Turns out, I do not. And that is unfortunate, just because now, it would have put me in a position to where I could go Ampharos and then go for the Terra... Uh, on them being stuck into, you know, the Outrage, get a free agility. And as I'm looking at this end game, it's going to be, it's going to come down to one of my two setup mods. So, first of all, I'm going to decide to go into Glaceon. I got my little boots on, I'm out here ready to party, and I have the ability to at least live in Outrage, because I know 
you know, with that defense boost from the snow still being up, I can definitely take it. So he does now get confused after I take that nicely, and an alluring voice is going to be able to take care of the Dragonite. So this end game is getting very interesting, and it's looking honestly pretty bad for my side. So as I do now get the throat spray boost with that uh, special attack, little little upper. I'm feeling kind of scared because I did not give up my Trailblaze. This thing kind of needs speed to be you know, at least a bit of a threat. And they're down to a couple Mons left. So let me break down the situation for you. They have a full health Chandelure of their own along with a Glamora in the back. Both of which can outspeed and kill Glaceon. And I'm kind of just forced to let this thing go down as they do finish me with a Shadow Ball. So defensively, I'm in a pretty bad position just because my only Mon that can potentially take attacks is going to be the Galarian Slow King. They have super effective damage on either of their mons against that. So it's coming down to a point where I'm looking at this matchup thinking Ampharos is about to come in extremely clutch here. And a couple of things need to happen, but I believe in the Sheepachu. So we bring in the Ampharos here, mostly just because I know that I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me, at least one of them, which is going to allow me to get these little legs, or at least thick ass thighs going for an agility. So they go for the Shadow Ball here. I imagine this thing is probably scarfed as well. I do just barely hang on because Ampharos is a thick ass beast and uh, I go for that agility. I realize I've called Ampharos skinny and thick in the same video, but it is what it is. So I get that plus two speed, now allows me to be faster than both of their mons. I can then go for that Meteor Beam, which gives me the essential special attack boost to be able to grab the KO here. Not only that, but hopefully on the Mon in the back. So that Meteor Beam does connect, thank God, and the Chandelure goes down, and sometimes the rock coverage comes in clutch. So Meteor Beam, absolutely essential, and now it is time for Ampharos to try to come in clutch. So again, final Mon is Glamora. Stealth Rock breaks any potential Focus Sash, and I can just go for a Thunderbolt here with that special, special attack boost. I should be able to grab a kill, but they go for the Spiky Shield. Wants to Wants to just see what I'm working with here, and the Thunderbolt is at least not going to allow him to hurt me with his little spiky boys. And Glamora, of course, does generally have the speed to just kill me with an Earth Power, except for the fact that I am agility the hell up out here. And all I really need to do is roast him and toast him with the Thunderbolt. I do obviously outspeed, and that is enough to take care of the Glamora. And Ampharos just came in extremely clutch. That agility was really my only late game win condition. And that is going to do it for the match. So I thought that was just kind of a fun ending. A little bit of a goofy match. But uh, what game is it, right? Oh, you're literally still here. Well, this is awkward. Might as well just fill the space with one more match. Because this team is fun. And it kind of sucks. But it's also just fun to try to get it to work. So let's go ahead and jump into match number three. All right, so my opponent this time is going to end up leading off with a Galay. Young Blade Arms is not the kind of guy I expected to see as a lead. And now Coffee Table's in a little bit of a weird spot. Obviously, this thing has the coverage against me. But I'm just kind of here to set up some Stealth Rocks so I don't get fined. So I go for that Stealth Rock as it turns out this is going to be a bulk up Galay. Kind of thought that this was going to be like a Choice Scarf variant like they generally are. I would then just live a close combat and then just have a good time. But instead... Now I'm in danger, and at plus one attack and defense, that's both bad, because now it's going to have enough with the Drain Punch to knock me down to one, but also, hey, with that defensive boost, def defensive boost, <laughs> it's going to be able uh, to live a Mountain Gale pretty easily, which I do at least connect on, and yeah, with that defense boost, I guess not super easily, it does still do a dick load of damage. So then I'm like, hey, hold on a sec, it is lunchtime in the middle of the battlefield, baby, I can then activate the Cust app be able to go first but instead they go for the priority with the shadow sneak so what the hell man i really thought they were going to just go for another drain punch um but very smart move maybe predicting the cust app berry with, with the shadow sneak and i remain defeated so at least i was able to get this thing down to a range where then i can just go right into chandelure and without any speed boost you can have as many bulk ups as you want but the chandelier is fast and i know that it's at least i can live a shadow sneak and honestly chandelier doesn't care that much about having too much health the main reason is just because also they don't have the rocks up yet so i figure that's kind of a sacrifice i'm willing to make i can then finish this thing with the shadow ball and the bad news about this team it just doesn't have a lot that wants to take attacks i mean galarian sloking is there um, but in general didn't want him to be knocked off and my sweepers kind of just need all the health they can take so at this point, now they're able to bring in the uh, Colossal and old pile of coal over here. Santa Claus says you have been a bad boy. And uh, I don't really know what this thing wants to do to me quite yet, so I'm actually just going to switch into 
the Galarian Slowking. I know that I can take attacks from this thing. Again, I'm specially defensive, and I realize I can't actually really touch this thing in return, but what I can do is be annoying with Thunder Waves. And if there's one thing that Galarian Slowking is gonna do, it's be annoying as hell with Thunder Waves. And then switch out and then get Regenerator, and then set up Snow later, and then just kind of be an all-around just absolute menace. So, I do connect on the Thunder Wave. I also take the Earth Power pretty damn nice. And at this point, I'm like, I'm just going to go for a, put this thing in a position where once that connects, then I'm like, okay, it's going to be a whole lot easier to kill with either Ampharos you know, or the Glacier. So, I roll the dice just thinking I can live one more Earth Power, which I actually do, which is uh, kind of nice. I live it with seven, and seven's all you need, baby, sometimes when you, when you have the Galarian Slow King. Because now, I can go for the chillingly bad joke, absolutely make the room cold as hell with the horrible quality of my joke, but uh, now I'm gonna get out of there. I make it snow, and then next time I come back in, I'll have a little bit of health regenerated, which feels pretty nice. So, I'm now chilling at 74, and as I'm looking at it here, they're just gonna go for another Earth Power, which is gonna allow me to go into the Popsicle, and then they actually just go for the Ancient Power instead, which is kind of a good move, because they tried to just grab themselves uh, the Omni Boost, with also being able to kill the Glaring Slow King. So, I do at least take one, and then I'm like, okay, Glaceon still has a nice little chance here to potentially try to get something going if we can get a para turn. Because if they get fully paralyzed on this turn, that I go ahead and boost my speed, they're going to then take the future side attack, and then hopefully be in range to be knocked out from like a, um, a blizzard potentially. So, they end up going for the Terra Water, which is interesting because now at least Trailblaze is super effective, obviously it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but then... They do not get fully paralyzed, and just throw some more fossils at my damn face, and down goes the Glaceon. So, that did not quite work out for our little boot wearing fella, but I assure you, one of these days, Glaceon's gonna go crazy. Now, the future side attack does take hold, and puts this thing into easy range, and also being paralyzed, this thing is a sitting duck for something to set up on him. So, you already know the drill, it is time for Ampharos to at least try to get something going here. I obviously need the agility. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. Plus, there's always that chance for that full para, and without a, uh, a stab earth power, I should be able to live one. But it just gets fully parried, which is perfect. So if it doesn't happen on the Glaceon, it looks like it might be working out for our little fella Ampharos here. So I decided to just go for the Thunderbolt. Now, the reason for that is because I kind of want to keep the Meteor Beam in the back pocket. I know that... Uh, one of their answers is going to be pretty nice for a Meteor Beam, and being able to get it off on one attack is a whole lot easier. So, I finished that thing with a Thunderbolt, his now Water-type ass, and they decide to go into the exact mon that we've been saving that Meteor Beam for, which is the Obama Snow of their own. So, Barack Obama Snow obviously feels like a good matchup here because it resists my uh, Thunderbolt, but what they do not expect is the Meteor Beam, and so I'm able to just go ahead and overflow with some space power, boost that special attack, and uh, just be able to fire it off immediately with that power herb. And then it's time to just start blasting. A meteor beam his ass right back to the cereal bowl for some delicious frosted mini wheats. And that's going to take care of the Obama Snow, which is amazing. So now, honestly, Ampharos is in a great position. I know that see, I'm faster than everything. I have a special attack boost and I'm at full health. So there's really not much else you can ask for with the Ampharos. So as they decide to go into the Vicavolt here... I'm thinking a couple things can happen. First of all, I'm going to go for the Terra Fairy just to resist the bug buzz. But then I'm like, you know what? A Meteor Beam would be a great play just because not only am I going to get another special attack boost, um, but if they stay in, then they just die the next turn. And if they switch, it's going to get great chip on whatever they want to bring in, which then should put it in a spot to die from the Thunderbolt. So taking things one step at a time, I do go for that, uh, that Fairy Terra, a nice little defensive Terra. Invicavolt does hit like a damn truck, unless you do resist the attack. So as I go for that Meteor Beam charge turn, they do just bug buzz, and I am able to eat it up. And now, whatever wants to switch in is taking a plus two Meteor Beam. So they decide to switch into the Magirna, and this thing is annoying as hell. It comes in, takes a little bit of Stealth Rock Chip, and I miss the Meteor Beam, which is wildly, and I cannot stress this enough, wildly unfortunate, because... <laughs> That amount of chip would have been super nice on Magirna, while it wouldn't have, wouldn't have done like a whole lot, it would have put it into easy range for a Thunderbolt to kill. And as I'm still at least able to outspeed, that Thunderbolt does not quite have that much damage, but I get the full para, so I'm thinking maybe there's a chance, but of course not. They do just break through, and the Flash Cannon is going to kill the Ampharos, and rip the sweep from my little Ampharos hands, which is so annoying. I swear to God, Meteor Beam misses 
way more than 10%. <laughs> the amount of matches that I've had where Meteor Beam was going to make a huge difference on connecting, and it just doesn't, is so annoying. So, Magirna does exactly what it does best, and now we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned shootout on our hands. So, at least I do have the Chandelier left. They do not have the Stealth Rock on there, on my end at least, and so I can come in as many times as I want, which honestly gives me a pretty good upper hand here. So, as I go for the Shadow Ball, I'm able to take care of the Ball of Gears, and that is going to bring them down to two Mons left. So, they have the Vicavolt, and they have the Drift Blim. So, the reason why I go for Shadow Ball is just in case they wanted to bring in Drift Blim or something. But as Vicavolt comes in, obviously a Shadow Ball is not quite going to be able to kill here. And the Stealth Rock actually even brings this thing to the Citrus Berry to get it back above half, which is annoying. I kind of banked on Shadow Ball being enough after the rock damage, but now it's not really looking like it. So, Chandelure is definitely very important for me in this very late game, and that's just because I have the matchup on the Drift Blim especially. So, I'm just going to switch. I decide to go back into the Slow King, as I'm thinking I just probably in Death Fodder, but they actually go for the Agility, which is going to make things extra interesting. And now this thing with its speed doubled, while he's naturally very slow, he's definitely feeling pretty quick now. So, it obviously can now just go for that Thunderbolt. Me being max special defense, though, it saves my ass there, because I actually live it just barely and allows me to get off the future site, which is nice, and as I consider switching, I'm like, you know, Glo Glow King doesn't really do anything for me here, so we're just gonna, it's gonna let him go down. So, the Bug Buzz takes care of me, and now the clock is ticking on the future site, but as I'm looking at it here, Vicavolt, even if it's max speed with an agility, a Choice Scarf Chandelure does have the ability to outspeed, and that's kind of the downfall of agility Vicavolt sets, is just because opposing Choice Scarfs are still generally just faster. So as I go into the spooky fella, I am just gonna go right for that flamethrower. I figure even if they go Drift Blim here, it's fine. Uh, the flamethrower does connect, I do outspeed, and that takes care of the crazy railgun bug. So now we've got ourselves a matchup just against the Drift Blim, and I do still have the Obama Snow in the back, who should be able to at least take an attack and then knock this thing out with the blizzard. So while I can, t can consider switching, I'm like, you know what? I might as well just stay in here. I can go for the flamethrower, get myself some nice chip, and then allow Obama Snow to save him, save himself in the back. So, flamethrower does not quite knock it out, but they're actually just going to go for the strength sap. I do not opt to just go for something like a shadow ball, and the strength sap is not going to give him much health back because I, of course, am a special boy. So, or girl. So I go for now one more flamethrower, and that is going to finish off the drift blim, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the game. So. That one was interesting, it showed the downside of friggin' Meteor Beam, which is ridiculous, and they just straight up turned their game off like three seconds before it would've just put us to the menu, so the salt is real. And uh, I had a lot of fun with this one, I love me some Ampharos, and it's definitely not great, but it is fun, and so that's even better for me. And if you enjoyed, of course, make sure to leave a like on the video, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.